What's up, everybody? Johnny Blaze back again. And, uh, it's 2.20 in the morning. And I want to show off a solution to a problem that I had. Thanks to people on PSX Dev. And, well, one person in particular. I forget his name. and Can't close this out without stopping the video, so... <clears throat> thanks a lot for that. Now, what you'll have... What you see here is a PlayStation unit. Seems pretty, you know, standard until you look at the back and those are AV ports sticking out of that. Yeah, so this is a 1001 unit, a launch unit. And I think I may have one of the, I don't know if it's how well I burnt the disc or maybe I found one that wasn't used as much. But remember, there's issues with these things. So and I found out how to get something to work. Now you'll notice the game shark in back of here, and that's because it is flashed with Unirom. Now it has a switch, but I don't have Kalita on there, so I just have Unirom standalone for now, because that really suits my needs it's more experimenting than anything else. Because I already have a modded PS1 with an LCD screen, so I'm good. This is just more to screw around with and the you know, the coolness of having a fucking original launch unit. But anyway, enough about that. I had an issue where I would get to the... Let me see if I could show it off, first of all. Now, there's no disc in the system. So we're going to use Metal Gear. Because it's classic. And I'm one I'm sure everybody is at the top of their list. So, we're going to turn it on. Now this screen pops up, the whole eBay thing, blah, 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 blah. But if I press X, now it's not fucking doing it. <laughs> but there are some times where it'll go to the X flash screen. So let me try that one more time, see if it does it. Unless it was just an initial first time jitters sort of thing. But yeah, um, this also helps if you do have the problem. So let's try this one more time. There, there we go. <laughs> Told you. Anyway, it goes to this screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset the PlayStation. And let me see if I can do it again. And... Sometimes, and like the guy says, sometimes it'll go to that screen, sometimes it won't. So let me reset it one more time, and then I'm going to show you exactly what to do if you, you're a little antsy about getting that screen. Now, for most, these will work for most games, you know, pretty much standard. So what you're going to want to do is press R1 on the controller to do the no cash unlock. Then you're going to press R2. See, you don't have to... You can bypass the welcome screen. You don't have to press X and wonder if it's going to go to X Flash. It'll load as soon as you press those two buttons. Now, with pressing R1, there does need to be like a couple second gap before you press the R2 button. But as you can hear and see, Metal Gear Solid's playing with no issue. Show a few seconds of cutscene. Cause I cause especially when people when they have said on the that thread that there are other people that had issues with the same issue I'm having, it sort of made me want to try it myself. So I save anybody else the trouble. And I know the quality sucks. I gotta get an RGB cable. And by the way, the RGB cables do work on that. Because even though it has the AV ports, um, instead of just the AV multi-out, it still has the AV multi-out. So you could still use an RGB cable on that thing. As well as S-Video. Now, I don't know if this is a game that's called, considered FMV or not, or if it's an engine. However, it works. And that's a big thing because these units are notorious for not working with FMVs. Now I'm sure when, you know, this 
gets a little warmer, I'm going to think differently. But for now, you know, this hasn't been used in a couple days, so it's working. Because the big problem with those launch units is the power supply is ne near the disk drive for some shit like that. And what happens was, is once the power supply gets warmed up, it starts to affect the disk read on it. So I gotta definitely let it go for a little while. I'll probably like one day see if I can get a game with FMV support and let that go and see what happens. But I also want to show something else as well. Press start. Load game because I have a save on there from my PS1. So we're gonna go launch memory card. Ah, control almost fell. Complete. Now it's good to have that save because you have to swap the disc. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Because there's some people that say and still say that Unirom has issues when you swap a disc. Now this system is not modded in any way. I literally just picked this up Saturday. The only mod that's on it is the Unirom in the back there. So we're going to pop in disc 2. And we're going to press start. Checking the disc. And it's loading. I want to read the mission log. I usually skip those, but I want you to see. Yes, it is working. So there you go. So, unless maybe you guys had issues with certain games. Because, because as you can see, I literally swapped the disc out. Because it asked for disc 2. And it works. So, I don't know, but... I mean, I'll, I'll, like I said, I have to do more testing, you know, as far as letting this go for a while to make sure. But as far as what's in front of you, it does work. So, if you have an issue with Unirom, this is the way to fix it. So, for now, Johnny Blaze, signing off.